I'm Walter Isaacson. I'm here with Professor Joseph Ellis. We've been talking about the founding of our country and the people who made it. Tell us about James Madison. Little Jimmy Madison uh, went to Princeton, was fa father owned a plantation in Virginia, reasonably strong economic background, small, sickly, predicted by his classmates at Princeton class of 70, 1772 that he'd probably be a librarian. He, he won't live very long. But he becomes an intellectual that helps uh, frame the concepts of the Constitution. He, and not only that, he outlives all his classmates. <laughs> I mean, he, at the end, he says, I might have uh, believed that I have, have outlived myself. And um, <laughs> he is the most politically agile thinker among the group. He thinks like a lawyer, even though he's not trained like a lawyer. It's like before the convention, the Constitutional Convention, he starts preparing his case. He also starts counting votes. He does. He, and most Virginia aristocrats don't like to do that. You know, that's mm -hmm. under them. And, you know, but he likes it, and he's really good at it. You know? And I still don't know how he knows how certain people are going to vote because they don't have emails and, they, you know, mm -hmm. and all this kind of stuff. But he, he has sources that allow him to accurately see the delegation in Virginia will be divided X number of votes, the de delegation in New York, Y number of votes. And he's almost always right on target. But prior to the convention in Philadelphia in, in the summer of 1787, he spent several months preparing the case for a fully empowered national government. So he's both a great theorist and a great sort of vote counter uh, practical politician. He is a real practical politician. And he's in some ways, he's originally partnering with Hamilton in the Federalist Papers, but all his, light, his 50 year project of coupling is with Jefferson. You know, you have three Virginia landowning planters, Jefferson, Madison, and Washington. How do they relate to each other? Initially, they're all hunky-dory. Uh, now, remember, Jefferson is going to go abroad, and he's going to be gone for most of the Confederation period and for the time of the, con the Constitutional Convention. But Washington thinks so well of him that he names him his first Secretary of State. He actually offers the post to Jay first, and Jay says he wants to be Chief John Jay. John Jay. Jay. Uh, he wants to be ch uh, Chief Justice. Mm -hmm. and, um, so Jefferson doesn't know his second choice. Yeah. Madison and, J and uh, Washington get along famously, give you a, you know, like, Madison coaches Washington before the convention in political theory. Washington knew what he wanted to conclude, but he wasn't sure how you're supposed to get there in some political thinking way. And when Washington is named president and he travels to go up to the capital city, which is New York, he asks Madison to draft his letter to the, to the Congress. And then he, the Congress asks Madison to write their response to Washington. So that Madison is writing to Madison. There's going to be a split in the 1790s, and Madison's going to come out against Washington, and Madison and Jefferson are going to form a Republican Party. But for a while, they're all pretty, pretty much in this together. Eventually, I think that Madison and Jefferson, this is a bit of a, and I'm a Virginian. I was born and raised in Virginia. Uh, I went to a college of William Mary, the same place that Jefferson did. They take Virginia towards a states' rights position that will lead to a defense of slavery and will lead to the Confederacy in 1861. Is that because they believe in the rights of states or is it because they're driven by slavery as an issue? Boy, that's a toughie. It's certainly the former, but probably both. Thank you very much.